the Jack Benny program. <laughs> with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last Sunday on his television show, Jack Benny acted both roles in that famous classic, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde which was written by Robert Louis Stevenson. That's right. Stevenson took a beating. (laughs) Wait a minute. And here's the star of our show, Jack Benny. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and... Don... Don, 33-dimensional. <laughs> Don, I want to ask you something about that introduction. Did you write that joke yourself? Well, I don't want to take all the credit. My wife helped me write that one. Oh, your wife. Your wife helped you, eh? Don, she's an actress, isn't she? Jack, you know very well that my wife is an actress. You've had her on your program many times. In fact, she was on just last week. That's right. Don, isn't it a shame that both of you are going to be out of work at the same time? (laughs) I'm sorry you have no children. I'd enjoy firing them, too. Now, wait a minute, Jack. You can't fire me after all the years I've been with you. I started as your announcer in 1934, and during all these 19 years, I've given you loyalty and devotion. Some loyalty and devotion. Every time I cut your salary, you tell everybody. (laughs) Anyway, Don... If you ever cut my salary, my mother would slap your silly face. (laughs) Dennis. Dennis, in the first place, I wasn't talking to you. And in the second place, it's about time you showed up. How come you missed rehearsal today? I had a tooth pulled. Oh. Oh, well, then I'm sorry. Was the tooth giving you a lot of pain, Dennis? No. No. Did, uh, did it have a cavity? No. Then why in the world did you have your tooth pulled? Because the dentist owed me $10, and that was the only way I could collect. <laughs> look, look, kid. You let the dentist pull your tooth because he owed you $10? Yeah, I wish he owed me 11 Then I could have had Novocaine. <laughs> well, I don't want to go into that anymore. I don't care whether Remley laughs or not. I don't want to go into that. Now, Dennis, look it. I don't mind so much your missing rehearsal. But the least you could have done is let me know. Well, I did. I called your house yesterday, and I told Rochester I couldn't be there. Oh, you did, eh? Well, I'm going to call Rochester and find out. Say, Mabel, what is it, Gertrude? Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what the bat in the pocket full wants now. (laughs) I'll plug in and find out. Hello? Yes, Mr. Benny. Very well, I'll see if I can get him for you. He wants I should ring his house and get him Rochester. Gee, Gertrude, you sound awfully formal when you were speaking to Jack. Uh, Did you two have a fight? No. Uh, In fact, just the other night, he took me to a preview. We saw Rita Hayworth in Salome. It was an exciting picture, especially when Rita did the dance of the seven veils. Gosh, did she take off all seven? No, she stopped when she took off number six. But Jack will never know. (laughs) Why not? He fainted at number five. (laughs) Are you kidding? Jack really fainted? Yeah. He closed those baby blue eyes and slid right off the seat. (laughs) Well, what do you know? Uh, Look, you've been seeing a lot of him lately, haven't you? Yeah. I've been seeing Jack so often I had to turn down a date with Dennis Day last week. But look who's talking. Jeannie with the light brown teeth. (laughs) All right. Look, let's not argue.
you. Gertrude. Gertrude. What? Are you sure there's no answer? Well, keep trying the number. Goodbye. What's the matter, Jack? Rochester isn't home. But I'm going to call him again. And Dennis, for your sake, I hope you were telling me the truth. Now, it's time for your song, so let's have it. Yes, sir. Oh, hold it, kid. Come in. Hi, uh, telegram for Jack Benny. <laughs> I'm Jack Benny. Well, here you are. I'll be darned, it's from Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What does he say? Dear Jack, I have just been informed that I am to appear on your television show. That's what I get for telling my agent to get me anything. <laughs> hmm. Now, come on, Dennis, let's get on with it. The... Boy, what are you hanging around here for? Well, sir, I don't mean to appear impudent or presumptuous, but when someone delivers a telegram, it is customary for the recipient to show his appreciation with a gratuity. <laughs> okay, okay. Here. Oh, boy, a Canadian dime. Now I can summer at Lake Louise. <laughs> Dennis, let's have your song. singing for 10. Very good, Dennis. It was excellent. And now, kids, we have a very important play to do tonight. Hey, where's Bob Crosby? Well, here I am. Bob, I just happened to think of something. You missed rehearsal, too. What's your excuse? Well, I had to go down to buy a little gift for Sammy's new baby. Sammy, the drummer's wife, had a baby? Mm -hmm. Gee, I didn't know that. Hey, remind me to send something, too. Eh? Okay. No, it's wonderful the way the presents have been rolling in. All the musicians sent gifts. Gosh, no Bagby sent a little blanket. Wayne Songer sent a cute little dress. Rembley sent a sweater that he knitted. And Kimmick sent the nicest... Hold it, hold it a second, Bob. Hold it. <laughs> you said Remley sent a sweater he knitted? Yeah. I didn't know Remley could knit. Jack, when you got the shakes like Frankie has, you can do wonders with knitting needles. <laughs> I, I, I guess so. After six martinis, he's an Argyle man. <laughs> that figures. Now, kids, it's getting late, and I think we ought to start on the sketch we're going to do. Huh? Uh, what about the sketch, Mr. Benny? Well, it's based on that wonderful Universal International picture, Mississippi Gambler, starring Tyrone Power. I, of course, will play Tyrone Power's part. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait a minute, Jack. Do you think you're the type? Well, he certainly is. He's young, handsome, and romantic, just like Tyrone Power. Oh, thanks, Dennis. You're loyal and devoted. I'm nuts, too. <laughs> Now, Don, set the scene. Oh, hold it a minute, hold it. Hello? Hello, oh. Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, I called you before and you were out. I had to go down to the market to do some shopping for the house. Oh, what'd you get? I got a half pound of hamburger, a can of peas, a can of beans, and a bale of alfalfa. Why in the world would you buy a bale of alfalfa? The price of milk went up two cents and I know what you're going to do about that. <laughs> I am not. They don't, let, they don't let you keep them in Beverly Hills. Pasadena, maybe, but not Beverly Hills. <laughs> now, Rochester, the reason I called is because Dennis Day said he phoned yesterday and told you he'd have to miss rehearsal. Oh, yes, boss. I forgot to tell you. Oh, oh, you did, eh? Well, were there any calls today? Yes, sir. I have them right here. Let's see. The income tax department called. Income tax? <laughs> what, what do they want? What do they want? Oh, it didn't concern you, boss. It was about the income I reported. Well, what was wrong with it? Nothing. They just called to offer their sympathy. <laughs> Well, that's your problem. Were there any other calls? Oh, yes, Miss Barbara Stanwyck called. She's giving a big party tomorrow night, and she wants you to be there. Oh, good, good. Black tie or white tie? White coat, you'll be parking cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Rochester, put some new batteries in my flashlight. <laughs> Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. <laughs> Don. Now, Don, you can set the scene for our sketch. Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Playhouse presents its version of Mississippi Gambler. Curtain. Music. In the middle of the 19th century, the main artery of commerce and transportation between the North and the South was the Mississippi. Riverboats used to paddle their way up and down in a never-ending stream. Aboard these ships was cargo and passengers, and a special breed of these passengers was the Mississippi Gambler. My name is Tyrone Benny. I'm a Mississippi Gambler. And I've been going up and down this river all my life. The first 20 years were tough. Then I got on a boat. <laughs> I don't remember much of my father, but my mother was a kindly woman. And she always tried to teach me right from wrong. I remember when I was two years old, she sat me on her lap and said, Look, son, you're very young, but try to remember this. Never draw to an inside straight. <laughs> Ours was a wonderful relationship. But when I was 18, Mother and I parted. I went to New Orleans, and she went to Tehachapi. <laughs> One day, my best friend, Robert Stonewall Crosby, and I found ourselves in St. Paul boarded a riverboat back to New Orleans. Do you think we'll make any money this trip, Tyrone? Sure, there are plenty of suckers aboard. But, Bob, I don't know whether you're ready to be a professional gambler yet. Well, why not? Well, you don't keep a good poker face. Well, what makes you say that? Because I've watched you. When you fill a full house, you're supposed to sit there with a vacant expression. Not jump up on your chair and sing two choruses of Oh, Happy Day. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
Here comes a couple of guys that look right for picking. Let me do the talking. Would you gentlemen care to while away the time in a friendly game of cards? Well, I don't mind if I do. I got a thousand dollars I can spare. And I got a Canadian time. <laughs> you got your tip. Get out of here. Now, come on, we'll play some three-handed poker. Well, suits me. Here's the table. I'll deal. Hmm. I'll open for $50. I'll see that and raise it a hundred. I'll see your raise and raise it another hundred. That's too much for me. I'm out. Well, I'll call. Give me two cards. I'll take one. I'll bet a hundred dollars. I'll raise two hundred. Well, I'll just call. What do you got? Four aces. Beats me. I got three aces. <laughs> That's why I dropped out. I only had two. <laughs> Say, wait a minute, stranger. You dealt those nine aces, and I think you're cheating. No man can say that to me, sir. Do you know what it means when someone slaps your face with his glove? It means a challenge to a duel. That's right, so take that. I accept your challenge. <laughs> incidents on the river, and our boat pushed southwards. Our ride took us down past Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, and then Missouri. <laughs> oh, that isn't who you think, folks. <laughs> yes, there was always plenty of melody and music along the river. Some nights as we sailed close to the shore, we could hear voices harmonizing on the levee. glad to meet you, monsieur, and I hope you and I can become good friends, very good friends. Her name was Yvette, and she had come aboard that morning at Albuquerque. <laughs> oh, I know that Albuquerque is far from the Mississippi, but for her, somehow the boat made it. <laughs> I 
told her that I, too, hoped we would become good friends. And she said... You are very kind, monsieur. She was a plain gal. <laughs> Slim, frail, and immature. <laughs> this description was written before the part was cast. <laughs> We fell in love, but because her brother hated gamblers, we had to meet each other secretly. One morning after we landed at New Orleans, she was supposed to meet me at the place where I lived, the Old Man River Hotel. It was called the Old Man River Hotel because when you stayed there, you were tired of living and feared of dying. <laughs> have some breakfast and call room service. Soon the waiter was knocking at my door. Come in. I had that you call for room service. <laughs> yes, I want some breakfast. Orange juice, coffee, and uh, let's see, what can I have with the coffee? Well, we have toast, English muffins, donuts, and Cimarron rolls. <laughs> what? Cimarron rolls. Look, waiter. Bring me some orange juice, coffee, and a Cimarron roll. Okay, and you're lucky. Yesterday, I couldn't have brought you any Cimarron rolls. Why not? We were out of cinnamon. All right, just go get it. He brought me my breakfast, and I finished it. And then Yvette arrived. She looked so beautiful standing there in her new knitted dress. I could tell it was newly knitted because a drunken guitar player was still working on it. Now, darling, you're here, you're here. Oh, yes, Jerome. I'm sorry to be late, but I Don't had... talk. Just come into my arms. Now, let me kiss you. Oh, oh, your kiss. It is so wonderful. It tastes of Cimarron. <laughs> Cimarron? That's French for cinnamon. <laughs> oh, then I must apologize to the waiter. Who can that be? Oh, it must be my brother. He followed me here. Hey, wait a minute. Ah, hey, monsieur, at last I have found you. You pig, you dog, you snake. I break you in two. Oh, then is my brother listen to me. Eh. Oh, j'aime cet homme, il est moi. Et quoi qu'il est un joueur comme du fleuve, et nous sommes des aristocraties, je lui marierai sans égard pour qu'elle te dise. What did she say? I do not know, but dig that crazy language. <laughs> now look. Monsieur, my sister will not marry your gambler. I challenge you to a duel. What? I slap your face with my glove. You're supposed to take your hand out of it first. <laughs> but if you want a duel, draw your sword. On guard. <laughs> I thought he'd be an easy victim. He was so young, so inexperienced. But as the duel progressed, the minutes wore on and on till we had fought an hour. Still we fought on with unabated fury, and another hour passed. And another hour. Then suddenly it was over. He didn't hurt me, and I didn't harm him. But my two sound men killed each other. <laughs> of a Mississippi gambler. <laughs> The 
listening again next week to The Jack Benny Show. Don Wilson speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.